So hi guys, welcome along to today's video. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope you're all looking after yourselves and doing well. Today we are going to be looking at modifying the R1 and putting a thumb brake on there. So let's start off by quickly discussing why we want to put a thumb brake on there. For what I can see personally, there's three main reasons. Number one, it's another tool to be used. Now a lot of people, especially on track, say they don't touch the rear brake, which is absolutely fine and I understand that. A lot of the time I don't use the rear brake, but what we've got to remember is it is a tool there to be used and it can make you go faster. So why not try and learn to use it? It's like only using 80% of the throttle when there's another 20% left you're leaving something on the table and it's another little skill to try and learn. So having a thumb brake on there will hopefully just give you a little bit more feel, a little bit more finesse to start trying to use it in places where you wouldn't normally. It also helps you to not have to close the throttle when the front wheel starts to come up so you can just hold the throttle pinned open and use the thumb brake to control the wheelie. So we're going to install it on this. Uh, it's going to be a split system so we're going to keep the foot brake as well. So that's mainly the first reason. Second reason is you know, you want to look factory, don't you? When someone looks around your bike or when you're on the bike, you want to feel like a full factory rider. So having a thumb brake on there on the controls is another little touch to the bike. And thirdly, but by no means least, is nowadays, in today's day and age, we're all inclusive. We don't want to leave Mr. Thumb out. So the only job he has is gripping onto the bar and holding on. So let's get him involved a little bit more, shall we? Nobody wants to play with me. So these are the thumb brake components we're starting with. We've got the master cylinder. Important to use a correct thumb brake master cylinder as obviously the leverage from your thumb is nowhere near the same as your foot on the lever. So you have a different ratio master cylinder with a thumb brake set up. We've got this mounting adapter bracket. This is a fork leg adapter bracket. Some of them are around the bar clamp. And then we have the hose along the hose to reach the rear caliper or the master cylinder if you want to use both still and have a split system on there. Small reservoir with a bracket and a few other little bits and pieces, including the banjo bolt. So the first thing is to try and mock this up on the bike and see how it fits and see what work we need to do to get it to fit if it doesn't bolt straight on. And that is the fork leg and that is the master cylinder clamp. So about a mil in it. So here we can see the fitment. It actually has quite a lot of clearance around the back edge there. Can't see a problem with the hose routing and everything else there. The clamp is slightly too small, as we've discovered from measuring it with a vernier, and also the lever itself won't reach the bar where we need to. So we're gonna fabricate a new longer lever and try and make it look a little bit more factory than this piece of aluminium that's just there. And we are also gonna try and machine out the clamp and make the diameter about one millimeter larger overall. So let's go and have a crack on with that.
later. So here we are then all fabricated ready to go on the bike thanks very much for joining me through that process if you bother to watch really happy of how that's come out homemade knurling a little bit of extra grip on there looks really smart uh, we've gone for a matte finish just so that it's not slippery when it's wet like a gloss paint could be and really pleased with how that clamp has actually come out and opened up so it's together ready to bolt on the bike we've also got ourselves a race torx adapter so that we can use the original foot brake at the same time must have an adapter like this you can't just double banjo the um the hose so we've got that hose and other bits and pieces let's go and put it on the bike at last So once we've got that finger tight, we just want to roughly get it in the right position, angle and height wise, and then nip it up. Any further adjustment, we've got a little bit of play on the link rod on the master cylinder. Um, when we're nipping this up, we don't want to go crazy and crush the, crush the fork tube. We just want to nip it up so that it's not rotating on the fork leg itself. So there we have it, she's in position. Really pleased with how nicely that clamp now fits around the fork leg there. Absolutely no gap anywhere at all around it. Nice and secure, clear of the switch gear and in a perfect position 
thumb operation. Let's get the reservoir on. So as with anything like this, it can be a little bit of a faff. So what we've done is we've decided to mount it on one of the pinch bolts for the clip on uh, around the fork tube. So we've taken out the original bolt. Now the bracket can't bolt straight up against it. So we've got this little metal spacer that we've made up. It's going to slip on like that and that will sit in there. So let's get that bolted in and then get the reservoir on. So here we are, we're bolted on. Hopefully you can see now why we needed that additional little metal spacer in there. Just to space the bracket away, make sure the bolt's long enough to still pinch the uh, clip on onto the fork tube. So the bracket's on, let's get the reservoir bolted up. So there's been a small amount of faff with the clutch cable here, but we're gonna end up going underneath it. And then we've just twisted this bracket now it's all bolted up with the little metal sleeve, ready to go straight through, locking washer, locking washer on the other side, and a locking nylock nut to boot. So there we have it, reservoir installed on the bracket, thumb brake, Master cylinder installed and the lever is on. So let's pull, pull the bike out, take the tank off and route a new brake hose. So here we are at the standard rear master cylinder. What we need to do here is remove this reservoir and the intake to this master cylinder and replace it with this race torx adapter which will then have the brake hose coming down from the new master cylinder for the thumb brake. <clears throat> we leave the original hose to the rear caliper and it's important we use this and we can't just double banjo this bolt as it won't operate properly it will just be trying to force this lever down rather than operating the actual caliper so first job let's get rid of this brake fluid let's bleed it out because we're going to change all the fluid anyway okay that should drain the majority of fluid from the master cylinder out, but there will still be a little bit of residual fluid in there. Have to be a bit careful. Let's get this bracket off, circle clip inside there. So that's all the old components out. Here's our new components. We've got a new fresh O-ring, a little bit of uh, brake fluid around that just to help it slide in nicely. I've popped the circle clip around the shaft of this adapter to make it easier once we get in. So pop your O-ring on there, nice and gently, ease her in without snagging that O-ring. Just like that until she seats home and you can see the circle clip groove inside and pop your circle it back in. So after a bit of a faff it's in, we've made sure the circle it's nicely seated and the adapter is ready to take the hose. So here we are, the cable has been fully routed as it comes off the master cylinder here, just down, nice routing through the bike, underneath the tank, obviously making sure it's not near any hot components like the exhaust or the engine block too closely. And then it runs out underneath. You can just see in there next to the shock preload adjuster hydraulics, a little bit close to the exhaust, so I will keep an eye on it. And it is quite close to this mud guard here, but hopefully with the swing arm movement, it still won't catch. And we're connected now into the master cylinder. So the last job now is just to bleed it up. Now with bikes, especially the front brakes, not so much the rears, they can be a bit of a problem to bleed them up. So we can use this Mitivac tool here, which is basically a tool that pressurizes and pushes vacuum depending on what you need. 
but in this circumstance, what we're going to try and do is actually back bleed it. So we're going to use this syringe here, a bit of brake hose on, on the rear caliper bleed nipple, and we're going to actually push the fluid in and back up until we get some fluid in the reservoir. That way, it should then be easier to bleed through in the conventional way afterwards. This just kind of fills the system up and gets some fluid in there to start with. Once you've got it filled up with a bit of fluid, it's much easier to bleed it out. So we've got the missy vac in case we need it. We've got a pot, always handy to have to put some brake fluid in. Now we've got some brake fluid just using dot four. We don't need to use dot 5.1 on this. So dot 5.1 has a high boiling point, but it's also more hygroscopic, which means it absorbs moisture easier. So unless you're changing it often, you're better off sticking with dot four. The 5.1 high boiling point, uh, depending on how often so you're going to change the fluid, is it really worth having the higher boiling point over the, the need to change it more often? Bit of broken clutch cleaner just in case you have a little spillage anywhere, spanner for the bleed nipple. And we've also got a brake fluid tester, which if you're not sure on the brake fluid in the bike, flick it on, it gives you a green light to tell you the battery's okay. It then goes up in percentages to tell you whether the brake fluid's okay or not when you stick these two prongs into the brake fluid. So if you're not sure whether your brake fluid's got too much moisture and needs changing, these are reasonably inexpensive. Get yourself a brake fluid tester and then you can check it. So we're gonna fill this syringe up with some brake fluid and try and back bleed it through the system. So there we have it, we've back bled it, so we've now got fluid up in the master cylinder reservoir. Always nice to back bleed it because the air will get expelled upwards to get it out of the way. That's the easiest way to get the air out of the system. Now we can go through and conventionally bleed it on the bleed nipple with a bleed bottle as you would do for the fronts. It's also worth mentioning at this point that we had some brake cleaner if there was a small spillage, but if you do a large spillage of brake cleaner, the uh, brake fluid, sorry, the best thing you can use to get it off is just plain clean water. Just wash everything down with plain clean water. So open the nipple, push the brake on, lock the nipple off, let go. Always remembering to keep an eye on the, on the brake fluid up in your masks in the reservoir. So here we are all back together. The brakes all finally bled up nicely. Caps on and the reservoir's full. And we've got a lovely bit of lever travel there. And the rear wheel is locking on just right. You can feel already how the thumb brake has more, uh, more feel to it. So hopefully we'll try and use it and see how we get on. We've gone round and we've given everything a final nut and bolt check to make sure we've missed nothing. And we've adjusted the link rod to get the lever just in the right position where we want it. We've also held the pressure on and gone around and checked all the lines and all the joins to make sure, not just up here, but down the bottom by the caliper as well, to make sure we've got no leaks on the system. We've also gone lock to lock with the bars and made sure nothing catches up there in the dash area so that we can still get full lock with it. And hopefully we've now got the best of both worlds where we've got the thumb brake and we've still got foot brake. So super excited to get out and try and give that front brake a little go and see how we get on with it, see what difference it kind of makes. Hope you got something out watching that video, enjoyed it. Very difficult to video and be playing around brake fluid and stuff. It's really, really nasty stuff. So be careful if you are bleeding your brakes out and obviously a safety system. So once I've taken the bike out and given it a good run and actually tested the system out, I will go over it all and double check all the fixings and make sure there's still no leaks. You do not want any failures with your brakes. So always, always go over the top with the safety. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll have some fun. So tune in to see how it goes. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the first time out on track with it. And thanks for watching. Look after yourself, guys. Ta-ta.